But if you're a young filmmaker or just new to the industry and don't have much of a portfolio, it's important that you figure out a way to produce content that shows off your skills as a director or cinematographer. And one of the best ways to do this is by producing spec work. And spec work is just basically free or unpaid work that you produce to show off your skills. And so uh, the more spec work that you produce, the more you're gonna be able to add to your portfolio and that will help you get more jobs in the future. Or possibly you're someone like me who's been in the industry for a couple years, but there's gaps in your portfolio. And for example, I recently reached out to a couple of production companies and said, hey, I'm interested in working with you or uh, collaborating. And when they looked at my work, they said, hey, we like your documentaries, but where's your commercial work? So I recently produced some spec work myself. And so I reached out to my friend David Stewart, who owns a video production company. And I said, hey, I want to produce a video uh, that kind of explains how you got started in this industry. How did you get started in this business? Tell me your story. And so what we're gonna do now is take a look at the spec ad that I produced for David and break it down scene by scene. And I'll leave a link in the description below to the full video that you can watch on your own time. So first things first, let's talk about gear. I shot the whole thing on the Sony a7S Mark III with the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 lens and I used my full rig uh, with a top handle, side handle, uh, external monitor, my typical rig that I shoot on. And uh, if you wanna learn more about uh, how I shoot, how I set up my rig for filmmaking, uh, I have a link to that in the description below. It's also on my channel. And for the interview, we had someone else come in named Brian Hunt. Uh, he shot the tight angle for the interview with the uh, Sony FX3, and he also had a 24 to 70 lens. So pre-production was pretty simple. David and I just had a couple of uh, phone calls, a couple of meetings where we talked about his story. We talked about the structure and basically uh, the story is pretty straightforward. It's how'd you get started and what are you doing now? And let's talk about the future. And typically I would use something like Milanote to help organize this shoot, but it was pretty simple. So just having a couple of phone calls and conversations with David uh, was fine for this project. Post-production wise, I edited everything in Adobe Premiere Pro. And because I wanted this to feel real and natural, I didn't go heavy on the color grade. Uh, I just did a basic conversion from uh, S-Log3 to Rec. 709, added some contrast, some saturation, and that was pretty much it. So now let's head over to my computer and we're gonna take a look at the film and break it down scene by scene. Okay, so here we are in the computer. I hope that you've already watched it in full. That would be helpful. Uh, I'll leave a link to it in the description in the video. So go watch it and then come back. And so this is the opening shot. Uh, this was, I didn't shoot this. And uh, we had to do some stock video. So that's an option for you if you uh, need to get some content that you can't shoot yourself. Stock video is always an option. And in our case, it worked out pretty good for this, uh, this video. So David, uh, his background is in skiing. So I wanted a shot of, I wanted a shot of, um, a, of a, a big mountain of people skiing. And you can see right here, people coming down the mountain. And right now there was voiceover of him talking. And then we cut to him. We see him for the first time. Nice tight shot. We see his face. Uh, we got, so I'll just talk about this, uh, this lighting setup for a second. Uh, we have a key light here on the camera right and in the background uh, over here on the left, we have some fair lights that are already in the space. We added a tube here in the back uh, over by his ear. Uh, I think the, looking at it now, I think the, that tube is way too hot. I would have liked to have brought it down to like 1%. If possible, it's just a bit too bright for my liking. But over here on the right, there are some lamps in this space. So I turn on this lamp to help uh, brighten up this corner on the right. Um, it is also a bit a bit too bright for my liking, but there's no way for me to control the intensity of that lamp. But it is an interesting shot and uh, I like it. And it has a nice soft light on his skin. Uh, the light probably could have been brought in a bit closer, uh, but 
so far it's a good looking shot. And we cut to uh, this. This is him as a kid. When, uh, so since we're talking about the past, I asked him to dig up some photos of him as a kid when he used to go skiing. Here are some current uh, clips of him skiing. I think these were shot in the last couple of years. Again, I didn't, I didn't shoot this. Um, he happened to have a buddy. Well, Brian Hunt, who was there on the shoot with us for the interview, he's the one who provided this ski footage. And so again, I had to outsource some of the footage and uh, that's okay. So I cut ahead and here's the, whoops, let's go back. Here's the wide shot of the interview. Uh, you now can see the entire space. Here in the back left, we had another RGB tube that we had on the floor and we shined it up on the back of the wall. And the light, or uh, the color of that, the color temperature of that um, tube is like blue. And you see as it moves across the back room towards the warm light, it actually turns a bit purple. And we had this little light over here in the top left as a practical. Uh, it was actually shining light over here somewhere just to bring up the shadows in the back of the room. It's a good looking shot. You have, um, you know, light, dark, light, 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 dark, dark, light. You had this peppering of light and dark, light and dark, which is kind of a, one of the principles of cinematography. Good looking shot, uh, lots, lots of nice vibrant colors. <clears throat> we, we looked out because uh, this, this space is actually a WeWork type space where David actually works. And this was a Friday evening and there was nobody there, so it worked out great. Now we're getting ready to go into his past and you'll see some more um, footage. This is all provided by David. Uh, back he used to shoot part of his stories. He started picking up a camera after he got injured. And this is all footage that he provided. Uh, again, I didn't shoot all this. Uh, again, he had some old photos of him, t photos of him taking photos and videos of other people. I, uh, since again, it's something in the past, I kind of wanted to give it this vintage look to it. So I did this really vintage border around the edges of the frame. And then uh, there's also this vertical uh, vintage film camera type looking frame. And then I just added some some overlay. I know it's a I know it's a photo, not a video, but I did this little overlay uh, to give it a more vintage look. This VHS look. More shots in the studio. Him editing. And then he's going to talk about the different clients he likes to work with. So, so part of this shoot was uh, I said, Hey, David, we need to get you actually hanging out with a client, doing some uh, some shooting. And so he reached out to a local boxing gym. We want something pretty dynamic, pretty fun to shoot. So he reached out to the boxing gym and we came in one morning and we lit the space. And this is the, this woman here is the owner of the gym. Uh, she's pretty, pretty tough and as, as you can see. And so, yeah, I, I was shooting David, shooting her. And then we used it as part of the film showing that, uh, showing him working with clients and showing, you know, he's someone that people want to be around and produces good content. And then this is all footage that he shot on his camera. And that was a fun shoot. It was a great place. And then uh, here we have David at home. So he's a family man. Uh, he has kids, has a wife. He homeschools his kids. He's pretty proud of that. And so we wanted to showcase that uh, he's just like us, just like you, just like me. He's got family, people he cares about. And so um, we got some footage of him at home with his kids and his family uh, because that's important to him. And then we show him an interview with uh, his mentor, Brian Hunt, who also provided the uh, B cam on the interview. They also provided some of the footage at the beginning more b-roll and then at the end of the video here he's just talking about legacy and so what i did here was this young man here he was actually uh helping david out on the shoot as a kind of a pa 
And I knew from the interview that we were going to talk about legacy. And so I made sure to get shots of them together. And I, I directed David to say, hey, I want to get some shots of you talking to this guy as if you're teaching him how to set up lights and how to set up cameras. Because I knew I was going to need that in the edit. And uh, I guess that's an important thing to consider is like knowing what's in your edit, what's in your interview, what was said in your interview, so that that... So doing the interview first allows you to uh, get the B-roll later that you need to support the interview. And then we end it here on a shot of him with his family as he's talking about legacy and the future of his business and giving back. And then we finish the video. So in conclusion, the benefit of spec work is now twofold. You now have a piece to add to your portfolio and you now have a happy client who has a piece of work that they can show and promote and say, hey, everybody, look at this cool video someone made for me. And hopefully it'll help grow their business as well. And of course, the intrinsic value of shooting a spec work is that you're going to get better at your craft. You're going to get better at pre-production. You're going to get better at using your camera. You're going to get better at directing and working with clients and post-production and delivery. All those things are involved with filmmaking. So there is great value to doing spec work, even though you're not necessarily getting paid right away. And so as you continue to do more spec work, you're going to grow your portfolio, and that's going to hopefully land you more paid gigs in the future. I think this is a pretty common path for all filmmakers that they have to go through. So don't be discouraged if you don't get paid right away. I hope this video was helpful, and if you got any value out of it, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next one. I'm rolling. Okay. Jack, take a uh, two steps to your right. What do you want to do here, Kelly? Like, maybe just doing this. A little bob? Yeah. Little there you go, a little shoulder. Yeah. A little shoulder bob, yep. Yeah.